The other day somebody was like, how about you remake the Mission Impossible graphics? These ones. Yeah. So we got a few things going on here. We have this kind of lens flare thing. We have obviously the Mission Impossible text. We have these little textured particles kind of coming off of this thing. And then as this goes, we have some particles here in the background kind of floating this way. And then we have the final reckoning coming in and just like kind of turning into existence. There's a lot going on here. We also have a little grid kind of in the background here, little textures, lights. We have this kind of glowy, kind of sparky firework looking stuff. Can we remake this in Fusion? But that's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Well, here's what I got. The final reckoning. I feel like this is pretty dang spot on. And this is just made from scratch in Fusion. Do you want to see how I did it? <laughs> do you want to see how we did this kind of kind of thing? Let's do it. Here we have our glorious node graph and all of its glory. Too many glories. And rather than rebuild this all from scratch, because that would take quite a while, we're going to walk through all of the little pieces. We're going to start with a good old black background. And then we're going to put something over it. What are we going to put over it? A kind of orangish red background with a rectangle mask on it to kind of give us this stripe. We're putting that over the black. Now we have our orange stripe. Next, we make our text. I just found a font that looked vaguely like the Mission Impossible font. And I went over here to shading and turned off this first element. I went to the second element, which by default is an outline and enabled that. And then just made it orange. Instead of the fill, we just have the outline here. This is all just within the text plus node. And this font actually isn't italic like this. In this third tab, the transform tab, I went over here to shear and you can kind of make things italic with that shear property. And so we did that and that's gonna be close enough for what we're doing. And that's pretty much the text. And the first thing we did was just merge the text over that background. So we, now we have our black background with the orangish red stripe and the orange stroked text on top. Then we're doing something else. What are we doing? Well, in this graphic, there's these little particles that are kind of coming off of here. It's almost like sparks, but it's not quite sparks. It's just kind of this weird little texture. And so to recreate that, what I did was I generated some particles and I used the text, this text as the emitter for the particles. So if you go to particle emitter and you go over to region, you can set the region to bitmap and then that will give you a input and you can plug some text or whatever you want into that input. And so this text itself is actually generating these particles. And these are kind of just being pushed out into space with a little bit of velocity and a little bit of velocity variance, just to kind of actually create little sparks coming off of the text. And then what we're doing is we're using a displace node to change the texture of these. So I'm taking some fast noise, which is just a way to generate clouds and plugging that into the displace. And what that does is kind of squishes it and stretches it out. So it's taking these particles and almost putting them through like a shrink wrap kind of filter. And so now what we have is these particles coming up, but it's sort of making this like static sparky kind of things, which is a lot like what it looks like here in our title. And then I'm just taking a copy of that text and merging it under. So we're kind of combining those two things together. And then we're adding a glow to it, which just makes the whole thing look like it's electric. And then we're putting that on top of everything we've made so far. And here at the beginning, we have the glowing text and the little sparks on top of the regular text and the orange stripe. And that's looking pretty sick. Next, we're putting a lens flare on top. So all I did was use our lens flare generator here. I brought a black background. This is just a copy of the black background into this lens flare effect and it can make a flare that looks like this. And I used a directional blur just to blur it out this way a little more. And we animated it to just continue to blur like that. And it starts a little blurry and then it just really stretches it out. Okay. And then we merge that over everything by setting our apply mode to normal and our alpha gain to zero, which is like an add transparency. And so it just makes everything brighter. It makes the bright things make everything brighter. <laughs> and so now we have 
everything just glowing and on fire. So we have this and we're just animating that flare to stretch out and we're kind of just fading out this glowy version of the text, combining it with our flare. We get this nice little sparky looking thing. And we're taking this flare one more time and kind of squishing it down and making it a little bit smaller and putting it over itself again with another add that just kind of makes it a little bit brighter, a little bit more white in the middle. So this is without it and this is with it. This is kind of just doubling the flare, which doubles the light, which turns this into kind of a white looking thing. And that's where it really starts to just get crazy. After that, we're gonna add some particles. So we took a particle emitter and had it generate some little blobs here. And this just kind of shooting them out this way with some randomized velocity, a little bit of randomized color. And then we're adding some turbulence. Now what the turbulence does, check this out. The particles will go with a random speed and direction, but when you add turbulence, it kind of moves them around almost like it's moving through the air. So it comes out a little bit more natural. So there we have a little bit more natural kind of movement with that turbulence. And then we're taking all of these and we're putting this over everything. And so now we have everything we've had so far, but then we have these little particles in the background because you know, that's what we have here going on. We have these little particles coming up. If you look really closely here, you'll see there's a grid. It's almost like it's looking through mesh. And so we made some mesh here, a little bit hard to see. Maybe I'll look at our alpha. So this is our mesh <laughs> and this is created with shape nodes. So what we did was took a single rectangle node, which is very, very skinny and just kind of put this on the side. And so it's like, it's width this 0 0.0005 and then turn that at an angle, ran it through a duplicate and duplicated it a lot. <laughs> so it goes all the way across this shot. We took that same rectangle, turned it sideways and duplicated it up and down and you put those together and it becomes a grid. Cool, right? And so this makes a grid of white lines. And then I ran this through a change style to turn them into black lines and then a render, which actually renders an image of the grid. Then we put the grid over everything and we get this nice little like a grid effect. That's nice, right? After that, we needed a little extra glow. So I just took the output of the text and just brought that into another glow. Added some brightness and contrast just to turn the saturation down and then we applied that on top of everything again by turning the alpha gain down. So it's an add transparency and that really makes this thing pop really makes it look like it's on fire. And this is kind of what we have so far. This little animated background. Oh, so cool. Now we need the text to come in. So I picked a font that looked very similar to the kind in the trailer and we can animate this text to start kind of sideways and then rotate into existence just by going to our text here, going to transform and rotating this on Y. By default, this is going to transform each character. And so as I move this around, we can rotate each of these letters. And so I just animated that to start sideways and then rotate into place. And we have a blur here that starts blurry. And as this rotates, it gets sharper, which again is just what happens here in the trailer. So they start sideways and blurry, and then as they rotate, they get less blurry. And that's gonna bring us to about here. Yeah. And then I noticed there was this little tiny flare that kind of moves across and kind of ends up being a little, see this little whoosh, whoosh flare? So I made another flare to kind of do that same thing. Added a little blur, animated that, put that on top of everything so we have even that little animated flare there too. <laughs> and then to give everything a little bit of movement, we just keyframed a transform to start a little bit closer and then zoom out. And this is what we got. Mission Impossible, the final reckoning, baby. So that's the Mission Impossible graphics recreated in Fusion. If you want to learn more about Fusion, whoosh, this is the place to go. If you want to make cool stuff like this? Well, here, there you, that's, that's the place. We got all kinds of videos on this sort of thing. My name's Casey. And if you don't know me, I'm just, I'm so glad that you're here. And I just want to teach you how to make really cool stuff. That's all. This is your mission. Should you choose to accept it?